All right, here we go. George Sheedy, welcome back to Vlad TV. Proud to be here. Thanks. Well, we got a lot to talk about. You were actually the first person that keyed us in to the YSL situation that was about to happen a couple of years ago. You actually reached out to us and said, hey, there's about to be a big bust involving Young Thug and YSL and everything else like that. And we're like, okay, that's interesting. We didn't know you at the time. Then sure enough, a couple weeks later, all the arrests start happening and everything that you said actually came to fruition. So I've always had a lot of respect for your journalism and you know all the research that you do. So it's only right that I bring you back again. I'm glad to be here. And there's been a lot that's happened. There has. Since. There has. So let's start with the YSL case first. Now, since our last interview, there's been allegations, and I think Trump may have actually made these allegations, you know, because a lot of the case is focused around the murder of Nutt. Right, Donovan Thomas. Donovan Thomas, exactly. And I believe Trump actually said that the DA, Fonnie Willis, had a relationship with Donovan? Yeah, so he, he tweeted something out like that, yeah. which is dumb. And, and it makes me wonder what Donald Trump is reading that he would have a sense to say, because there, there was this rumor and it was made up out of nothing. Huh. It was a so, so let me tell you where that came right. from. And, and by the way, when I say relationship, I meant a romantic right. relationship, exactly. not just a friendship, a romantic relationship. So basically it was Reddit noise that somehow mm. broke out into like the equivalent of complex somewhere, like into the blogosphere, which started, and then he must have seen that because he was looking at Fonnie Willis stuff. Fonnie Willis, when she was a prosecutor, but not the district attorney in Fulton County, was the responding prosecutor to the Donovan Thomas murder. And she sat down with Thomas's family and said, look, I will bring justice to you. Mm -hmm. And she's had a picture of Donovan Thomas on her desk since 2015, since Donovan Thomas was killed. It's not clear to me that she ever met him while he was alive. Hmm. Um, so that somehow turns into Fonnie Willis really cared about Donovan Thomas, which turns into Fonnie Willis must have been in a romantic relationship with Donovan Thomas, uh -huh. which turns into Donald Trump seeing some third-rate blogger writing this nonsense and goes, yeah, she's got to be on Donovan Thomas's. Because <laughs> that's where we are now. And it doesn't help that Fonnie Willis is has romantic issues that are showing up in court. Yeah. You know, yeah, which is happening right now uh, based in one of the based on one of the prosecutors. Yeah. So now is that a real thing? Yes. And that sucks. <laughs> Explain what exactly that is. Uh, f first, it's like this gob stopping. I can't believe this is happening thing because mm -hmm. it's not it's it seems so far out of her character. But uh, Fonnie Willis apparently began a romantic relationship sometime around the time that she was also picking a special prosecutor to lead the investigation and prosecution into Donald Trump and the election interference stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Nathan Wade is a, um, he's sort of a, like a fixer. Hmm. Like that's his local reputation. He's a highly professional, highly skilled Winston Wolf style lawyer who you bring in to do things that you can't do yourself. Um, like swinging the legal equivalent of a baseball bat around in order to set things right. Hmm. He buries bodies. Hmm. Um, and the Republican, uh, at the time, sheriff in Cobb County brought him in at 500 bucks an hour to go sort out an open records lawsuit, like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, she went through two other choices. One is Gabe Banks, uh, who represents the, the occasional rapper. Um, and was a colleague, and that, but, but she also approached Roy Barnes, who was the former governor of Georgia. Hey, do you want to lead this Trump thing? And both of them turned her down. And so she turned to Nathan Wade, and he came in, and the question is whether or not they were romantically involved before she brought him in or after she brought him in. Hmm. Um, because there's a big legal question about whether or not 
she's paying somebody that she's romantically involved with. Right. Like, it creates an appearance of impropriety. If the appearance is legally sufficient, that's enough to knock her and him off the case. And if they're knocked off the case, some other district attorney from some other part of the state gets the case, and we wait for another year or however long to see whether or not this actually gets judged. Got it. Okay, so let's go back to the YSL case. You know, because since our last interview, a lot of stuff has happened. A lot. Um, So if I'm going down the timeline since our last interview, back in August of 2022, Young Thug and Yak Gotti got new charges for possession of a machine gun. Right. So that's, yeah, that landed after the cops arrested Young Thug in his house. Yak Gotti was there. So was Lil Duke. Uh, along with, like, cases of promethazine syrup hmm. and a, uh, a Glock that had a switch on it. Ah, uh, yeah. And that's it. Okay, so are they all charged with it, or is it just one person? They're all charged. Uh, Gotti is still in jail, and he's facing the charge along with Young Thug. Duke cut a deal. Aha. Uh-huh. And I am awaiting his testimony. So is he going to testify? The terms of his deal say if he is called, he must testify. Aha. And he's got a lot to say. (laughs) Okay. Can he plead the fifth? No. Aha. Or else he goes back to prison. Or else he goes back to prison. And how many years will he get? I think it was 10, but I'd have to look it up. Sheesh. 